Aí eu queria, com essa, essa indicação, passar a palavra à professora Jéssica Polca, é, que é... Tem, os currículos estão nos, no, é, no material de divulgação do evento, mas, muito sumariamente, diretora executiva da ASAP Bio e é presidente do Board of Directors Future of Research. Professora Jéssica, por favor. Thank you so much, uh, and thank you all uh, for uh, this discussion, which we're about to have about preprints. I'm very excited for that. Um, I apologize for speaking in English. Um, thank you to the translators in, in the back of the room. Uh, but the slides are available online, uh, and they're also linked from um, on Twitter, uh, so that I hope that you can use that to identify the links that are, are presented in the slides as well. So. Uh, I think that everyone here is familiar with the Isaac Newton quote that if I've seen so far, it's only by standing on the shoulders of giants. Of course, we all know that human knowledge is created by standing on one another's shoulders. And the longer it takes to build one level of this giant human pyramid, the longer it will take to complete the product. And so therefore, it's important that all products of scholarly work are made available as soon as possible. And yet, in cell biology, which is the field um, where I uh, have my background, this is actually opposite to the trend that we're experiencing. On the left is a graph of the number of panels in journals in this field um, over the course of 30 years. And as you can see, much more work or knowledge or data is being placed into these journals. And as a consequence, on the right, the time it takes for students, graduate students, to publish their first paper is also increasing. So uh, this work was done by Ron Vale, uh, who is a professor at UCSF. Uh, he, uh, as well as some other, recruited some other researchers to organize a meeting uh, called ASAP Bio um, in early 2016. We were very fortunate to have Abel Packer there uh, to learn uh, and exchange ideas about how preprints could improve the transmission of information in the life sciences. And so, uh, as I'm sure that we will discuss more, preprints are just versions of manuscripts that are placed online prior to completion of journal peer review, although there are different definitions we can discuss as well. And they accelerate the communication of results to the community. This is not a new concept. The preprint server archive has been operational in the physics community for over 25 years and has over one million records. And furthermore, uh, it is just one of dozens of preprint servers that have now emerged to serve different disciplines, languages, and communities. In the life sciences, preprints have grown dramatically over the last few years, due in large part to the growth of bioarchive. This is a plot of preprints posted per month. The green is bioarchive. Uh, and so I'm going to talk just briefly about three benefits of preprinting. Um, and we can certainly discuss more as the panel progresses. But the first is that many funders have begun to recognize preprints as legitimate scientific outputs. In other words, that these are recognized as a form of scholarly communication that can be listed on grant applications and reports. Uh, and some of them, for example, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, have gone so far as to require preprint deposition. So these statements um, by funders are really powerful in letting researchers know that this is a way that they can communicate uh, their latest results uh, in a form that will be recognized by funding bodies. Next, preprint servers are actually serving as a marketplace for editors. In the same way that editors might go to a conference to learn about exciting research and invite submission to their journals, Preprint editors, uh, which have been formalized at PLOS Genetics and at Proceedings of the Royal Society B, are actually looking through preprint servers and finding suitable manuscripts. So this makes the process of submitting to a journal more efficient. But I think the, one of the biggest benefits of preprints that helps to improve the quality of the final published article is that preprints invite feedback from the entire community. It's like going to a meeting and giving a talk to the entire world, or at least the people in the world who can see your preprint. 
Um, so I think that I'm just going to tell one story um, from Daniel Quintana about the feedback that he received on his on his preprint. So he posted a preprint to uh, I believe this is on Sci Archive, and then linked to it from a discussion on Facebook of all places, and. The discussion that ensued was extremely detailed, very comprehensive, and led to Dan inviting one of the people who were commenting to be his collaborator in the new version of the manuscript. So here is a way of meaningfully um, identifying errors, improving the quality of a manuscript, and even establishing collaborations between researchers. Next, preprint feedback actually is also helping readers. It's a form of public commentary or public peer review that enables readers to understand the context of a paper. So here is a tweet from a graduate student, Vincent Boudreau, who says um, that the discussion on, on a paper, uh, on a preprint, in other words, on BioArchive in the comments section, has helped him understand what the status of the field is. Where do the prominent people in the field agree? Where do they disagree? This is invaluable information that is usually hidden in the process of peer review. And finally, preprint feedback helps journals. So here is a statement from the FACEP journal. Its preprint policy is that it will consider the comments, or it is obligated, excuse me, it reserves the right to consider the comments made to manuscripts on preprint servers. So in other words, this is a way of expanding the pool of peer reviewers that a journal can draw on um, to, to anyone. And of course, the editors, I uh, will assume, will use discretion. Um, and the comments on BioArchive are moderated. So this is not a free-for-all, but I think it speaks to the idea that many people can participate in identifying uh, work to make the paper better. In addition to this, there has been an explosion of venues for commenting on preprints. These are third-party venues that uh, enable uh, scientists, scholars, readers, to comment on preprints, and they vary in uh, their organization uh, and the, their purpose. So, for example, Prelights um, is from a scientific society, and their goal is to highlight interesting papers. Um, By Overlay functions as an overlay journal, uh, and Pre Review functions as a preprint journal club. And the idea uh, behind pre-review and similar initiatives is that rather than spending students' time discussing papers that have already been published that cannot change, why not spend that time helping an author? So by discussing a preprint, the students are learning about the latest research. Um, rather than becoming an exercise in negativity, they can actually write up the contents of their journal club and send it to the author to help improve the quality of the final paper. I think it's a win-win uh, situation. Uh, so the benefits of making peer review public are such that uh, at ASAP Bio, we have tried to encourage this uh, for journals as well as these preprint commenting venues. And so, I just want to draw attention to a letter that we have uh, online where um, several dozen journals have signed committing to publishing peer reviews. Many of them are already publishing peer reviews, but a few of them which are listed here do not yet. And so we hope that making this information more transparent will help uh, improve the quality of this discourse. However, it's important to remember that preprint adoption is very, very small. Even with this astounding growth, pre the fraction of papers posted as preprints is still very small. And so we're trying to address this um, by thinking about how culture changes. So uh, behaviors don't just come directly from beliefs. Instead, um, in, if someone has a belief um, that sharing their work early is good, they first have to make a decision to preprint, meaning they have to know what a preprint is. <laughs> then they have to contend with the incentives or barriers in place. In other words, journal policies or funder policies. They have to have an easy way to actually carry out the behavior. They have to have a smooth behavioral path. And I think that this collaboration between uh, Public Knowledge Project and Cielo to make a preprint software that interoperates is very important for this role. And next, they have to perceive that preprinting is a normal activity that is accepted within their community. 
And this is why we want people who do preprint to be as vocal as possible about this fact, make it known. Uh, we have some stickers here, so please come find me. <laughs> I'd love to give you some. Um, and uh, we also have a program whereby we are trying to encourage people to talk about preprints locally. Uh, and we also offer some resources online that include uh, a forthcoming resource on licensing choices for preprints. So with that, I want to thank the board of directors and I look forward to further discussions on uh, this panel. Mm -hmm.